Hey there everyone, this is Cloud Chief, and in today's video I'm talking about Skirmish. Now before I get into a lot of the details about it, you'll see me right now trading sparks, and I'm trading them for obsidian fragments. Obsidian fragments are kind of essential to do Skirmish if you're going to low man it or solo it with the method I'm using. Um, we'll get into that, but just to surmise so that you know, you want to have a thousand fragments per floor that you're planning on clearing. Uh, when you're first starting this out, you shouldn't really plan to clear more than uh, two floors. But uh, like I said, we'll get into that. So once you have your obsidian fragments, you will need to make sure you have farmed all your items. I have another video up that talks about being able to farm the items and how you want to go. After that, you want to come to uh, East Adeline, and then you will need to trade him these four items you essentially want to uh, trade a sash to basically allow you to have a caring creature to fight on your side which is what you're going to want and then you need the other drops just to be able to you know get into the zone uh especially starting out you want to just use the aorcia head uh tier one the rest of the pieces don't matter too much the body and legs can kind of be whatever tier you want but even starting out it's probably good to be tier one i think it's the body piece uh determines the size of the zone the the particular focus is on the head and the sash you want to make sure you have the sash and you want to make sure you have a uh eeyore or see a head tier one or maybe a tier two since we're only going to be doing the first couple floors if you're soloing it you know that's all you need so clearly when you come in you want to get your trust out immediately that is the first thing that you want to do uh, once you've you know got your uh, trust out and you've buffed up you can go ahead and click and go to the first zone but you definitely want to make sure you are buffed and ready because as soon as you go to the floor it, like it starts and pretty much what skirmish is you pretty much summon monsters and then they head off to go and fight the stronghold and the enemy summons monsters and pretty much you know whoever clears out the other person's base you can see the hp at the top left you know the enemies is the stronghold whoever's goes to zero first wins that floor obviously if you lose you're kicked out if you win you can go to the next floor and repeat until you clear all the floors if you're soloing it you're pretty much just want to do you know the first two floors if nothing just the first floor uh when you come in you need to go talk you'll see the book after you go to the first floor you saw me do that like uh you know a few seconds ago you need to convert uh your obsidian fragments to puellants that's the very first thing you do. After that, you want to immediately summon your Kirin. After that, you can, you know, do any number of things. If you're not at least level like 99, and possibly even higher with like Spark Skier, at least being you know one 109 or you know higher, you might not want to bother doing anything and just try and clear the first floor for your drops. Because these enemies can be somewhat difficult. Um, trying to think, there's pretty much four different types of enemies, not counting the enemies that get summoned out of the stronghold. There are these two different butterfly types. One's in the small butterfly groups, the other one's this big butterfly. Uh, those are the ones you really want to focus on because those are the easy enemies and they are going to give you puellants when you, you know, take them out. The small cluster of butterflies do not aggro where the single large one does. Then there are these elements. The elements are pretty much what you'd think of as an elements. Uh, you can take them and get two elements, but they are much more difficult. And unless you are like have a room fencer or you have a group, you kind of want to avoid them for the most part. Because they're just going to you know suck up more of your time. You really want to focus on the butterflies. Uh, there is something else. There's like a slime. If you end up seeing it, that's a rare enemy. You definitely want to take it out if you are capable of taking out enemies. And it's not too difficult. And when you take it out, you will get a bunch of drops. There's also like an NM type thing that'll pop it you know it'll look like a uh, you know 
like a Hume NPC sort of. Uh, and that's kind of tough, but you, uh, it's recommended taking it if you think if you can handle it. So you need to judge depending on where you're at for this. If you're at 119 and you got good trust, by all means, try and take it out. But the main thing at this is to clear the floor. So I'm sure you saw a second ago it popped up all the drops if you were paying attention to the log. That tells you the drops you're going to get for you know, clearing if you finish that floor. And you get that indication when the stronghold is at 50%. As you can see, we're well past it at this point. It's about done. Uh, also to note, the stronghold will not go below one HP unless you're the one who hits it. You need an actual playable character to actually finish off the stronghold. But because of AoEs from the monsters, and these monsters are like significantly harder, you want to stay out and don't even try and attempt at the stronghold until it's pretty much done. Or else you have a high risk of death, just because of AoEs and how hard these enemies hit. Once you're done, you can uh, pop your key, and you will get your drops, or you can uh, continue to go on the floor. For each floor you clear, you will get one piece of gear. And this gear is, you know, 119 gear, and it's like class specific. There's, I think there's, there's a tank set, there's a heavy DD set, light DD set, healer type set, and then caster set. Uh, most of these gear by itself aren't anything amazing. Uh, typically they're going to be well under par for other 119 gear however you can augment them and add stats and if you get really good augments on some of these pieces it can end up being best in slot for certain jobs uh, for specific uses but uh, that's rare and few and far between typically this skirmish is done so that way you can bridge the gap so you can get to 119 and you can start participating in other events so you can get other 119 gear uh, this is how you're gonna get to that point if you don't you pretty much need to be carried by you know friends or link shell members to do it and that's pretty much for the most part you just you know uh, you know, come in, summon your Karen, let him start doing the work and going. If you start getting past, like, the first floor, Kieran can handle everything himself. You, you really shouldn't need to help him or summon any additional creatures. The second floor, eh, he can probably win it by himself, but there's times where he will lose it by himself. That's when you want to be trying to at least kill a couple creatures and then summon some more you know take out some of those butterflies get some swarms and summon some additional help and they'll help out you'll see me later I summon like a ton of stuff to try and help <clears throat> but you the big thing to this the success if you're gonna go beyond the first floor is really paying attention to stuff uh, you want to pay attention to the numbers so like above where the stronghold like the HP of both the bases You see numbers so there's one and then there's three so right now I have one creature out which is just Kieran and he has three out although his three creatures are You know significantly weaker the enemy does have Pretty much with the equivalent of a Kieran, but they don't start summoning him until at least floor three typically higher than that uh, luckily, Kieran will summon all the other lesser gods, you know, Gembu, Bakyu, and all them, and it's random how it works. But uh, if he's taken down too fast, it, you know, won't happen. So the enemy uh, mobs, not the ones that we're farming for Puellants, but the ones that, you know, the stronghold will summon, they will not aggro you. However, they will aggro your trusts. It's something that it seems to aggro NPCs. I think if it has somewhat of a choice, it'll aggro oh, like the Gembu or any other mobs that you summon. 
However, if you of course attack them, they will attack back. And you don't really want to mess with these guys. They hit significantly harder than any other enemies. You can't really handle them, I guess, if you're like completely topped out. And if you're completely topped out in gear, I'm not sure why you're doing this. They seem to aggro any NPC type mobs. So obviously it aggroes any of the your summon mobs and it'll aggro any of your NPCs. So just be aware of that. Um, you also want to keep a close eye on, you know, your number. As you can see right now, I have nothing. They ended up taking out everything. Luckily, I farmed enough Puellant so I can go ahead and summon another Kirin. But you want to keep an eye on it. Uh, a, a good idea, and I typically do it, I'm not sure why I didn't do it this run, uh, is to track your Kirin. That way, as soon as he goes down, you'll uh, lose him off of your wide scan tracking. So that way you'll know as soon as he's down and you can try and, you know, respond accordingly. But typically you want to, you know, have other creatures out. You're going to have your uh, best results by quickly getting some Puellants and getting a couple creatures out that will just help Kieran and take some of the pressure off. Because if he's the only one, obviously, when they start getting larger numbers, they're just going to, you know, do so much damage and he'll go down before he even has a chance to summon help. You can see right now, I'm just trying to overload them. I had enough that I was able to summon a ton of monsters. Right now, there's 10 out. And, yeah, you can see they're just wiping the floor with the enemy team monsters. Their numbers are dropping really fast. So, yeah, they're pretty much all done. Yeah, so now they're all headed to uh, take out the stronghold. And that's pretty much the method you want to do. Uh, you can, as long as you clear the first floor, you're given a key. You can use that key to pop and leave at any time. However, don't wait to the last second to pop it. Uh, there's been times where I've completely lost a run because I waited too long to pop it. It takes about uh, 10 seconds to pop your key. So if you're getting beat on something, it's you can't just, oh, I, you know, I can eat, quickly pop my key. No, it takes time. Another thing I've done is I've lost track of the time, which is something you don't want to do, in the top left, and then I end up popping my key late. Uh, that's extremely rare because, you know, it is easy at least to clear the first couple floors solo with no help. So, yeah, we're about to clear the second floor here. And so now I'm guaranteed the Helios Jacket, which is a caster body piece. And I believe, what was it? It was the, uh, I think it was a healer hand was the other one. But yeah, you'll get random drops. So it's really good if you're, you're recent coming back to kind of spam out this event. And you can do it solo to get your job up to 119 and you can get it to the point so you can at least participate and not be completely carried through end game events like i said most of these drops and items aren't you know great there's definitely better item slots but this is what is going to bridge the gap from you being one uh from level 99 to hitting 119 so this is definitely a, a good event you could technically come in here, at, I don't know if there is any level restriction, but you could come in here at the lowest level and if nothing else, clear level one without ever fighting any mobs. You would just need to make sure that you trade the sash, you know, when you're getting your pop set to come in and that you have uh, obsidian fragments uh, that you trade it for so that way you can convert them to Puellant so that way you can immediately summon your Kirin. You do that, if nothing else, you're guaranteed, you know, one drop per run. Now, it's a random drop, but it's still a drop per run. And if nothing else, any, you know, excess drops, say you get, you know, duplicates, you can go ahead and turn them into NPCs to get more sparks. So, it's not a complete loss getting duplicates. Plus, considering you can augment them, it's sometimes good to have multiple pieces, because you can get different augments to use for different pieces. But... Like I said, typically there's better gear than most sparks, or, or most skirmish gear. However, like I said, getting the right augs, you can actually have best in slot 
with one of them in very rare circumstances. What is it? I believe I in on this floor I end up losing track of the uh, mobs because at this point I guess I'll just have the one Kieran and I I think he starts getting over overrun. Like I should have been back here before and summoned more creatures so that way he wasn't taking as much damage and getting his HP low. You know, it's these type of strategies you'll learn just by, you know, doing it and practicing it more. But, you know, if nothing else, we got two floors cleared. So even if things start going south, it doesn't mean the run was a loss. It can still be a complete win as long as you make sure you get your key popped in time. Just as long as you're giving yourself at least a 20-second window to respond to whatever happens, then you will do well in here. Uh, if you're just losing track and not paying attention and like all your cameras go down and then even before you know it All the enemy monsters are uh, beating on your base then yeah, then you're just gonna lose so the big thing is is just to try and keep an eye on You know your numbers Try and keep an eye on Kieran if you can do that through tracking uh I think starting out, it's best if you try and duo this. If you can find a, a friend or buddy who also needs gear, you make sure you both have pop sets, um, and then you can work out whatever arrangements you want for your gear. So if like you want a heavy DE set, they want a tank set, then you can be like, okay, you take all those pieces, you take all those pieces, you both bring a pop set, and you go do two runs each time you do it. I think is a fair and balanced way to do it, and everyone's you know winning out. But uh, yeah, see, like all my creatures died, wasn't paying attention. Now the enemies are swarming in. So at this point, I think I'm about ready to yeah call it. Uh, I just tried running past, let them aggro my. Uh, trust as you can see they're getting beat on and so now it's like okay i'm just gonna pop a key to get out of here as soon as we pop the key a chest will pop to note whenever a key's popped and anyone in the run can pop it a chest will pop where that person is standing so if they're running and they're not paying attention the chest will pop where they were at and then they'll keep running and then you could potentially lose their chest so watch out for that after you're done, you click the chest, you get all your drops, and the armor gets dropped to the pool. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, hit the like button, and may you have success in all you do.